Greetings home brewers, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm actually testing out uh, some new equipment that I got. Uh, the new equipment is the stainless uh, vent hood with ducting. And uh, I've pr pretty much put it as a makeshift setup here. And uh, doing a test right now to see how well the uh, hood evacuates the steam. And uh, let's check this out. So right now I'm boiling about uh, just a about a gallon and a half, two gallons of water so we can get up the temperature pretty quick. Uh, as I have on my table here right now, I am going to be looking for a more uh, permanent table. I've actually cleared out this section of the basement here. This is where the brewery is going to go. Uh, I got a, about 72 inches from where the edge of the table is and the uh, hood to put a nice uh, prep table. And then I'm also going to have to come up with another uh, smaller table because the t prep tables that I usually find are about 34 inches high which this is about 29 inches high. This should be a little bit higher up, but it's actually just enough of a clearance for this size pot. But I have a 30 gallon kettle down here that would definitely be uh, not a lot of room. I think you only got maybe the th three or four inches here and uh, I would need a lower table in order for that to work properly. So one of the other advantages of uh, having this set up in this corner, I'm really close to my electrical panel here. Uh, this uh, GFCI outlet was already here. It's a 20 amp and it was meant for the alarm system But uh, when I run my controller directly to it I'm not getting a very little voltage drop here because it's such a short uh, run from the uh, panel to the breaker out to the outlet So I'm getting about 119 volts in 18.1 uh, amps out and 2164 2165 watts consistently and uh, that's really good. That means that I'm getting the maximum output that the uh, heating element is able to create. So a little bit about the stainless hood. It is a type 1 hood. It's actually a meant for, this is a Zephyr uh, name brand here. Uh, it's actually a little less known name brand, unlike, unlike KitchenAid or something like that. But uh, it's 36 wide, uh, 27 uh, deep, and 18 inches tall, which is a pretty good size. It's got the, the baffle filters here, so it's really designed for grease and smoke. Uh, the price that I got this for was, let's just say it was less than $100, and it did not come with the blower. There's a couple different options you can get with this hood, but normally, without the even without the blower, the, the stainless steel alone is worth well more than that. Uh, so it was quite a steal. I found it uh, at a liquidator's warehouse, and there was three of them, and long story short, the I guess the contractor had to get rid of them because the customer didn't want this style hood for whatever reason so eh, they're lost my gain the uh, fan here is a 10 inch inline it's uh, from hydroplanet got off got it off of Amazon and uh, got some uh, aluminum ducting here 10 inch uh, to basically draw air out and steam and run it outside in uh, outside from the basement here I just made a, a simple makeshift cardboard thing for now I took out the glass window and it's blowing all the uh, uh, any steam that or uh, smoke that would be catching up from here. The thought is is that we want to evacuate the steam out. Right now it's running on low. This particular fan is a 10 inch. It says 980 CFM, uh, but they advertise that it's 1150 CFM. My guess is that they have different testing methods and. Uh, I mean, you can look at the specs right here. It really does draw a lot of air, and I did confirm that it does draw 200 watts at full power. The cool thing is that it's running on uh, low right now. It's got a variable controller, which right now I could easily increase it. Once I get this up to a boil, I'll see how much uh, power I really do need. I'm hoping that even with my 30 gallon kettle that I can uh, keep it on low or somewhere in the middle uh, where I don't need the full capacity, but have it in case I do. So we're about to get to a boil here. So normally I would have uh, the lid off on the side a bit, but uh, I'm gonna take the lid off and see how well this can evacuate the steam. So I just turned this thing up to high and uh, it's really not that much more loud than uh, it's the low setting. And I opened up the uh, lid here so you can get a nice rolling boil. And uh, you can see that the steam, I don't know if you can see it on camera well, but the steam is going up into the uh, baffles here and you can see it's starting to collect on the baffles here uh, now this is a type 1 hood this is meant for grease and smoke the uh, type 2 hood would be meant as a condensate hood which is really what I should have 
but the good thing about this is that it does have a lip on the sides here where as it drips it will go into this little pan right here the only thing that I'm missing is that normally you would have a little drain here where the condensate would come out whatever doesn't get uh, drawn up into the fan so that might be the only modification that I need to do my thought is, is that once I have a chance to test this and run it for about 20 minutes I'll see exactly how much uh, water's collected inside there and go from there. So I just completed uh, the 45 minute boil or so here. Uh, really got a chance to see what the system is going to be capable of. And uh, my original assessment of adding a condensate drain here uh, is going to be the best way to go. Uh, as you can see that a lot of the condensation uh, collects here on the baffles. But uh, my thought here is that once I put the condensate drain if it were to overflow, it can go into a bucket on the side here, no problem. I checked inside the uh, fan. On this side, it is completely dry. There's no uh, over condensation or anything like that. Uh, so that's a good sign. It looks like I have more than enough CFM for my given application. Uh, I will have to retest this when I get my bigger kettle set up. But uh, I'm gonna call this test a success. Those who follow me over on the Homebrew Talk forums, I'll uh, put a link into uh, the description with the thread on this particular hood build, and uh, I'll be able to answer more questions there, but feel free to leave a comment. I'm going to be learning alongside everyone else. This is kind of new territory for me. Uh, as I read through the different forums, a lot of other people have gotten uh, similar setups like this, even uh, using a 30-quart uh, stainless bowl uh, with a similar inline fan, which has been very successful. My other and final thought will be that uh, when I'm boiling, I usually leave the lid off to a, to the side anyway. I'm not going to leave the lid all the way off during a, a normal boil. I don't see the point. Uh, you actually use more energy uh, when you have the a lid off. So if I keep the lid on, then uh, it should minimize the amount of steam coming off and also uh, keep the smell from uh, collecting up in the house. So thanks again, and uh, thank you for subscribing, and thanks for watching. Cheers. Okay guys, so I actually re forgot to mention, and this is a very important topic, and it's uh, the topic of makeup air. We have a vented hood here, and it's taken all the air uh, that's coming up from the kettle, but also in the surrounding environment, and putting it outside. That's great, that's what we want. But if you're in a basement here, and there's not usually a lot of, there's usually windows like this, the small ones like this. If you don't have another one open, uh, or a door, or any other air, uh, source of makeup air, it's called, where fresh air can come in as you're evacuating air out from your hood, that can be a very dangerous scenario. And the reason why is because of your furnace. Right now we're in the summer, so the furnace is not running, and I have an electric hot water heater, so that doesn't uh, create any fumes, but uh, a, a fuel oil-fired furnace will create carbon monoxide emissions, and that usually is evacuated through your uh, chimney flue there. If you create, If you don't have a way to... Uh, bring fresh air in it's going to come from somewhere and this is where it's going to come from this is your updraft vent this usually when this is running you have enough of a negative pressure pushing up into the flue where the outside air will help to create an updraft and that's how your furnace will evacuate the fumes this is also the only if you have no other windows open in your basement it's going to come from somewhere and it's going to come from that vent carbon monoxide is odorless it's a uh, tasteless gas you won't even know it's you won't even sense it unless you have a carbon monoxide detector, which I do. The carbon monoxide detector is actually right here underneath the alarm system. And that would tell me when I have a buildup of carbon monoxide. But at that point, it may be too late. So the simple way to avoid this is to have another window open, have a door open, so that when this is running, you're not going to draw fresh air, or in this case, carbon monoxide, back through your chimney flue. So thanks again for watching, and thanks for learning along with me. This is uh, Beer Baron Brewing signing off. Talk to you guys soon.